So now, just a reminder from last time, uh, this is where we got to where I'd uh, printed out, transferred the, uh, the image onto the copper, and uh, I just don't think I've got the iron hot enough to uh, to get it over um, the entire board. So you can see it would have worked had I got the right pressure and temperature. Uh, and I've heard this is a thing, this sometimes happens, so I'm not too dispirited. Um, what I need to do now is uh, take this off and replace it. So. I'm actually going to just quickly uh, get this ink off. And this is a nice thing, until you actually start etching, you're not committed, you can wipe this down. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll quickly just show it wiping down, and then what I'll do is I'll jump to the point then where hopefully this has come out as one piece. If you look at my previous video, you'll, you can see the disaster unfolding and see how I got to this point. So feel free to take a look. Okay, so I'm just going to just don this trusty glove. Now this this one I did use, actually, so yesterday actually, I'm cheating a little bit actually, because this is directly after I filmed the video for yesterday. Um, or whatever it was, I'm getting on my timelines mixed up now, but this was straight after my previous video, so I thought, I don't want to leave this on here, I might as well take it off while it's still fresh, just, you know, you never know, it might get attached to the board or something like that. Uh, so this is the same glove I was using last time, same uh, acetone I was using last time, and what should happen is this should just literally come straight off the board. So if I give that a rub, there you go, you can see it's just coming straight off, which is good. So uh, it means we can have another go at this again. Um, so I'm just going to do that. Um, as you can see, that's coming off quite nicely. It's one thing I use a lot of in this house. It's kitchen paper. Um, it's a lovely smell as well. I think I did mention that last time. Um, <coughs> what we'll do is when I need to use this board again, I'll give it a shine up with uh, wire wool, and then we'll uh, we'll be in a good place. Get the last bit coming off. So we're good to go again. So okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, apart from throw the board on the uh, table. I'm gonna jump to the point now where uh, we've printed it out again, ironed it on, put it in the water bath, and come out with a whole image. And uh, I'll tell you then how many attempts it took. Whether I did it first time or it took several times. I'm expecting it might take me a few times to get it right, but um, that's just the way these things go. Cool. Okay, let's jump forward. Okay, so picking up from last time, I've uh, now actually got round to transferring the, the image onto the PCB. And uh, here's a quick look at how it's come out. So you can see actually it's not too bad. Uh, so I think where I wrong last time was not putting enough pressure on with the iron, so I've kept the temperature the same and just put a bit more pressure on. But you can see that's actually come out really well. Now I'll just see how close I can get with this. There we go, yep, yeah. so all of them come out. Now there's a, there's a few missing bits, so just there, there's a bit missing, and I think further up there's a little bit missing as well. Uh, yeah, there's one there, and I'm sure there was a pad that was missing as well. Um, all right, it's somewhere there, I'll find it again. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just use a pen, just try and touch these bit up now. In theory, using a Sharpie should do it, um, but if not, I mean, I can always just do a wire link over, so I could actually just solder some Kynol wire from there to there if need be. So, you know, I'm not expecting this to come out perfectly, and, uh, you know, it's, it's all a bit of an experiment. And I've actually been put off a little bit because uh, one of the comments from uh, T Riddle, I think it is, uh, I was actually saying, actually, there's this place where you can get the PCBs really cheap, and I must admit, actually, it's a lot cheaper than what I've found uh, before in other places. So I'm, I'm seriously having a bit of a crisis at the minute now because I'm thinking, well, actually, it might be worth just getting an impression made, especially at that price. Um, I think I'm going to crack on with what I'm doing at the moment, and I'm going to stick with uh, doing these boards because, actually, it's quite nice to see if I can actually do this. But if this turns out to be a disaster, then I think I'll go and use that uh, third-party manufacturer. Uh, even if these turn out quite well, I think I'm still going to consider it because I've got quite a lot of relay costs doing actually if I could make the design so I can reuse it um, and make it so you just adjust the number of relays that are going to be on the board to get the different sort of configurations and I could actually do five boards all the same. So we'll see anyway. So uh, right, next job now is going to be just touching this up. So I'll do that now and then basically we're ready for etching. Um, now, that's where there's no way back. So at the moment with this, I could actually uh, just wipe um, all of the ink off of this using acetone. And I've, there's a, shown that in my video just before this. So it's quite easy to uh, start again. Obviously, once I start etching, there's no way back. So once that goes, then that is it for this piece of uh, piece of board. I mean, if it goes wrong, I've got another 
another piece over here so I've, I could easily have another crack at it from scratch but uh, again the further you go on the more steps you have to do to get back to where you were so um, it stands to reason. Cool okay right let's uh, see if I can touch this up so I'm just going to move the camera over to one side because at the moment it's right in front of my face and I'm making it quite hard to work uh, but we'll touch it up. Right then so this is quite fiddly work because my pen isn't exactly the smallest and the tracks here are are quite thin so I'm just going to try and get a, a coverage over here. I've got a feeling this is going to be way too thick. I think that is actually, I think that is way 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 too thick. But what I can do is I can let it dry on a bit and just scrape it back because there's a few other bits up here as well that um, what happened when I um, when I transferred and ironed over some of the black print that was on the um, uh, that's on the magazine actually came over as well so there's a little example of that in the corner up here. Um, I think there were a few others. So and what I found was when I was actually running it on the tap, if I just sort of brushed it lightly with my thumb, uh, it would remove some of those those stuck bits. So some of these pads, the there were sort of bits bridging between the gaps, uh, and again just rubbing with the thumb lightly seemed to move them off. Um, all right, okay, I'm going to shut up for a bit and we'll fast forward this bit because it's quite a bit to fill out here. Sure, there's another piece there that was missing, but I'm dumbed if I can see it. It's trouble with this particular design, it's very, very busy. Oh, there's a bridged bit there as well, I can see. So I need to sort that out. To a certain degree with this again, you want to kind of make it as clean as possible every time. Uh, try and tidy up as much as possible before going to the next stage. Because again, any bridges between the tracks here now are gonna they're gonna make it more difficult for the next for the next stage and for the etching. Uh, there you are. So just down there, I think this, I don't think this pen's going to work actually. Um, I'm going to see if I've got a finer tipped pen and we'll see what will work. It's it's difficult to know what will resist the ink. So right, let me just see if I can find one of those. No, so for some reason I seem to have got a house full of dry white markers. I'm not quite sure why. Um, I've got a feeling this this actually won't resist the, um, the etching um, chemicals, but what I just remembered, I've actually had this, um, it's like a white marker that I've been using for marking up some of the cards and it's got a reasonably small nib so I think I might try this and see if this will do the trick. Again, I mean this is going to be a bit experimental so it may or may not work and I keep surprising myself with just how small these traces on here are. Um, right, so that's the one that I'm going to go for. So. That might do better actually because that does seem to be drying on. So there's a sort of a splodge down there, and I think what I'll do is I'll try and tidy it up with the blade in a minute, just see if I can get a bit of coverage. So I might just go over these. And there's probably a better way of doing this. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I think that's the bit sort of missing. Yeah, which isn't bad actually. To say it's a first attempt. Um, the more and more I'm doing this though, obviously I'm committed now, now I've already started doing a video, but uh, the more I've been doing this, the more I keep thinking that actually I should uh, just get these made professionally, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how far we can get. Right, so next up now I'm going to try and uh, scrape away some of the bits that shouldn't be there, um, so that the, the copper will be exposed. Uh, and the way I'm going to go about doing this is I'm going to... Um, use one of these blades and just see if I can scrape away some of the bits and it's quite an oily blade actually. Um, have I got a piece of tissue in here? No I don't think I have. Right one moment. Right, uh, this always reminds me of being uh, doing art at school where you have all those lovely lines and then suddenly as soon as I start colouring you know go all over the lines. I've got a feeling it's going to be something like this uh, here. So I'm just going to try in this larger area first of all and just see if I can scrape away some of the resist. And if I can do that then in theory I'll be okay to uh, try some of the more delicate areas. I think that's looking okay. Yeah, it's looking better.
So I'm trying to get the angle right with this so that I'm scraping the ink away without scratching too much into the copper. I think I'm just about getting the hang of it. Um, it's a little bit of a line down there that I think we'll get rid of as well. Okay, that's looking good. Yeah, okay, right. Let's have another quick go up here. Well, at least if nothing else, it'll have that handmade quality about it. Um, all right, I saw a couple of bridges somewhere in here as well, a few bits that were touching. Let's see if I can find them again now. It's such a repetitive pattern, this. It's very difficult to see what's what. Ah, there we go, there's one that's Switching a little bit. Let me those. That's difficult to get at. I think I've done what I can with this, I think. Let's see if I can tidy that up a little bit. In theory, you can get a pen that actually has etch resist in it, uh, quite a fine nib, so if I was going to do a lot more of these, I probably would get one of those, I think. And it's all that bit out there. Okay, I'm going to stop there. We'll see what this comes out like. Right then, so let's go down to the kitchen and uh, see what's what. Right, okay, so this really is the point of no return now. So once I uh, commit to this, <laughs> there's no going back. Uh, this will either work or it won't. Um, and the basically what I'm looking for is I need to get all the copper off the office in the areas where I don't want it. But I want to make sure also I don't under etch as well, so I don't start going underneath the lines or making them too thin. So. Um, there's a couple of ways of doing this. I think you can either just plop it into the uh, etchant and then just move it around a little bit. Uh, the one I did of the card before, I actually used a sponge there just to lightly sponge over the surface. I'm a little wary of doing that this time because I think actually these, I'm not sure these lines will come out, but we'll see anyway. I might need a little bit of encouragement to uh, remove the copper. So the tub I have from last time is here. Hopefully it's coming out okay on the camera. Yeah, it looks like it is. Because uh, once I start with this, I won't be touching the camera, otherwise it will just uh, dissolve. Um, so the, the etchant I'm using is uh, ferric chloride. It's the horrible grotty one that get it on your clothes, it'll stain you. Get it on your fingers, it'll stain you. Put it in anything metal, it'll stain it and eat through it. Uh, so needless to say, don't do anything with this stuff in a metal sink. Uh, although that's exactly what I'm doing here because I don't care about this sink, uh, it will eventually go um, and it will go much quicker if I uh, use this stuff on it. So uh, there you go, so this is the one I'm using. It's very cheap, very readily available and it's fine until you need to get rid of this stuff so you can't put this stuff down the sink, uh, that's a definite no-no. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just have to uh, store it in another plastic bottle and eventually uh, go down to the uh, council and uh, get it disposed of down there, one one of the uh, refuse centres. Um, so the one that's in here was used uh, was it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so it will still be good actually, it's, it's only eating a little bit of copper, but I'll, do, I'll top it up with a little bit of this and then we'll just see how we go. So uh, from this point onwards there's no going back. I'm going to don gloves now and I'm going to take my watch off as well because oh, if anything gets on that, that'll ruin that as well. And we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Right. Uh... Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to top up a little bit of this.
Smells disgusting already. Okay, right, in he goes. Interesting, you see that fizzing away already? Which is quite interesting. So this is, because it's new actually, it should eat through the cup quite quickly. Um, oh, smells awful. It smells of rotten eggs. So what I'm gonna do is just gently agitate this. I'm just going to have to keep a very close eye on how it's doing. I mean, normally it should take, you know, sort of five, six minutes, something like that, but this actually probably is going to happen quite quickly with it being so fresh and it literally is just, you know, brand new. It's not um, um, diluted in any way at all. Let's take another quick look at this. Much, yeah, it's already started eating the copper off. Uh, still a bit of a shimmer there, so still a bit of a way to go. But it's already it's it's coming off quite uh, quite quickly. The key here is to stop as soon as it's got most of the copper off. Just stop and uh, then give it a wash down. Because what we don't want to do is start attacking underneath the uh, underneath the protected areas. Um, now the, the idea with this sponge was that you could sponge it lightly and what it would do is it would just help clear some of the areas that had already uh, started to be eaten up. Um, but I'm, I'm very wary of doing it this time because I just think I'm just going to uh, lift all those tracks away. Um, Alright, let's see how we're doing. And the smell's died down a bit now and actually it's reasonably well ventilated in here but uh, again it's not the sort of thing you want to do really close up I'm not sure particularly how harmful it is but it doesn't smell nice it's that sort of egg sandwich smell is probably the best way to describe it I just need to make sure there's no copper there at all otherwise what it'll do is it'll just bridge between the uh, between the tracks See, I think that is looking generally quite good. I think I'm going to give this a uh, give this a wash off and just see what we've got because I can always go back into uh, back into this if I need to. All uh, right, see if I can make it to the sink without damaging or anything. Yeah, it's still a way off, so uh, yeah, it's definitely going. Um, but there's still, if I can get the sheen right, there's still quite a bit of copper between the tracks. So I've just dried that off, so I'm not going to water down my solution too much, and we'll have a bit more of a bit more of a go. It's getting there though. So I'm probably being quite over cautious with this because the other one I did I didn't care too much if I got it wrong whereas this I kind of put quite a lot into it now so I kind of want to make sure I uh, I don't destroy it um, but you know if I, if I do I can always have another go. Ugh. Tell you what I won't want to take sandwiches for a while. I'm just going to turn this the way around as well because I'm aware that the the rocking motion I'm doing is putting a lot of the uh, a lot of the etching down one side of the card. So I'm just going to put it in this way as well, just so I'm not getting it all down one side and not down the other. The more I've been thinking about this tonight, actually, the more I am thinking that uh, it's even if it is quite expensive to get these cards professionally made, I'm just wondering if it is worth the hassle of going through all this. I'm quite interested in doing it as a hobby and just trying it out, but. You know, if I'm going to make a lot of these cards, it's it's almost is it going to take as much effort to do it this way as what it has been to do the uh, matrix board way? Um, certainly worth considering. Anyway, we'll see. Now I'm kind of committed to doing this now because I've started. Of course, I've stopped putting videos up on YouTube before I've actually finished, so I kind of have to finish now, uh, which is you know interesting. I think what I'll do when I get to the end of it is decide whether I have to actually solder stuff into the board or not depending how it comes out. Actually interesting, it looks like actually if it eats through like a top layer of copper but it looks like I can actually start to see now through the board so I think I've probably been quite eager in going a bit earlier. What I should be able to see is the almost the colour of the back of this board shining through so actually I think I can see now where it's starting to eat on the edges so I think I've got a better idea of when it's when it's done. 
should probably just leave it for a bit and just leave it to its own devices, but I don't know. It's funny, it almost looks like it's kind of stalled. It stopped. So I think this is where the sponge technique comes in actually, because what it should do is wipe away any of the uh, uh, any of the etching that's sort of um, what's the word for it uh, saturated with copper. So I'm intent to start lightly wiping the board and just take the risk. I think I'll do is I'll try it on one of the edges, and it's probably just probably just a case of being impatient, but. going to try it on the top edge which doesn't worry me too much if I get it wrong. So I'm going all out for the sponge now, sod it. This is probably a complete lack of patience that's going on here but there's definitely still a lot of copper on there. Uh, I think we're getting somewhere now. I can see now how this is starting to bring the copper off. So I'm just working small areas, I think. This is kind of the experience I had with the other board as well, that it, it came off really quickly once uh, I gave it a little, a little wipe. Something else that's come to mind actually here as well is that it's actually quite cold in the house at the moment with it being winter and everything. And I think actually the temperature of this is probably having an effect as well. Um, so it is, I think because it's so cold, it's probably taking it a lot longer to eat, eat through. Um, so that, that could be having an effect as well. And we'll see how it comes out, because we can always have another go. Okay, so uh, there's probably a lot of impatience going on there. So uh, after the camera stopped, uh, because it was just filling up my uh, memory card, I start pouring away at it a bit with a sponge. Now the idea then is just trying to keep the, uh, the etchant moving, but what I've actually done in places is I've probably caught the um, some of the traces. So I think some of those might be faint or might have actually eaten through. Uh, so I think we are. I think I'm going to be redoing this card. Um, but what I'll do is we'll we'll try taking the uh, resist off and just see see what we've got. Um, but if I hold this card up to the light, you can see through it quite nicely, which is good. Um, so far it looks a little bit like this, just take the autofocus lock off, there we go, so you can see through the board which is quite nice, that's kind of what we're looking for, and you kind of see these few areas where I've started to eat through, so there's a few more breaks there, and that's purely just my impatience, I started pouring at it when I should have probably just left it until it had uh, done. Uh, I think also the um, the etchant might have been a bit on the cold side as well, um, which wouldn't have helped either. So I think if I do end up doing this again, I think what I'll do is I'll get the etchant up to a nicer temperature um, and we'll see what happens. Okay, well, uh, let's um, use yet more kitchen roll and what I'll do is get the acetone on this and see if we can stop rubbing uh, this resistor away and see what's there. Hopefully there'll be some copper tracks. Fingers crossed. Okay, looking good. It's coming out okay. And of course, it'll be those uh, smaller traces at the bottom that will be the uh, the one where it may have all gone wrong. But let's see what we get. No, it's there. It's coming through okay. I guess I want to be careful not to rub too hard as well. Um, so I want to take the the toner off, but I don't want to rub all the lines away. I just want to make this abrasive. So I'm getting through this acetone quite quickly, I don't know that much. Okay, actually that's looking not too bad. I can't quite tell if the lines are blurry because they've still got some toner in them or if they've been eaten through so let's keep on trying to clean this up. Now this happened on the other card where it's almost the toner gets ingrained into it. So 
it all gets quite messy. Now it's difficult to tell whether the copper tracks then are uh, are eaten through or if it's just the toner that's sort of left behind. I think what I'm going to do is try a little bit of wire wool in some of the uh, some of these larger areas, just see if that just gets rid of some of this uh, some of the muck that seems to be trapped between the between the tracks. Just seems to be a little bit stubborn, not coming off. This might be part to do with the magazine paper as well. I think that tarnish is quite um, quite ingrained actually. I'm not sure if that just comes from the uh, the paper I'm using, which might not be the best thing for this. So there's quite a few bits here that look like they're actually broken tracks, but if I I am doing this gently, if I gently rub it with the uh, the wire wool, it is clear that it's just some tarnish that's over it. I'm actually quite amazed how well this has come out. It's by no means perfect. That it is looking okay. I think what we'll do in a bit is we'll give it a, a closer inspection and see what that looks like. Okay, that's <clears throat> not looking too bad actually. There's definitely a few breaks in a few of the lines, but generally I think that's probably okay. I mean, I think what I'll do is just get a multimeter on it, just test some of the tracks and see see how they're faring. Um, I would really like to template this actually, because I've bought some templating solution. Again, that's another thing that's not particularly cheap, uh, but I quite like the idea of doing it. Now, what I'm worried about with this is that if this surface is not clean enough, that the uh, the templating solution won't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to pause for a minute, I'm going to scrub this up a bit more and then see if I can get it a bit cleaner and then uh, if it's looking okay I think we'll try the templating. <laughs> 